Well, it was the warmest June on record for England, second warmest for the UK. We did have a high, uh, seasonal high of 34.7 Celsius in Greater London yesterday. That was the hottest day of the year so far. But I wanted to look today at uh, the pattern that we've had so far versus what we have down the road. Thanks for clicking on to the Wednesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. It is the 2nd of July. I wanted to show you the uh, anti-cyclonic wave break pattern that we've had over the last few weeks that led to the heat over eastern North America and then eventually into Europe for a second time in a matter of weeks. Now, this is the, the, the one-day two-meter temperature anomalies of CDAS, and you can see the northern hemispheric view. Now, there is quite a large area of cooler than average east Europe into West Asia, as well as that across uh, much of Canada and into the western United States. Now, this is going back to Monday the 23rd of June, and this was the beginning of that uh, renewed pulse, that renewed atmospheric wave that uh, you know transited the northern hemisphere bringing a deep trough into the western united states leading to powerful high pressure record breaking warm temperatures for the month of june central and eastern united states and then obviously we ended the month of june on a record warm note for europe as well so i want to draw your attention first and foremost to the uh, to north america now we do have warm conditions especially across iberia france into Central Europe, into the UK, particularly so the south of the UK. But watch what happens as we play through this uh, this loop over the course of the past couple of weeks. So we play through this loop. You can see, like I say, heat in the eastern and central United States, western areas of Europe. But look at the amount of cool air across uh, uh, eastern and northeastern Europe into the northwest of, uh, of Asia as well. And very cool across the western half of North America. Continue to play through this. What's happening is we've got this anticyclonic Rosby wave breaking over North America. That then it forces the highs, uh, high pressure to build over eastern North America. Then, as a consequence, it strengthens the jet, forces a, a rebuckling, a southward dip in the jet east of North America out over the Atlantic. Then, in turn, that builds the pressure over Europe. And that's essentially what has happened. Notice here the cooler exit in Canada, out into the open Atlantic, <coughs> and watch the temperature anomalies over Europe. The, the reds reappear once again as we shove uh, unusually colder out of Canada into the open Atlantic, and then that forces upper-level divergence and strong subsidence over, over Europe here, and this is essentially where we have ended up, so to speak. The heat uh, did relax over eastern North America, once that uh, those records were broken, then we seen that the uh, ridge building uh, eastwards, forcing the, the jet over the top to strengthen, causing a, a, a fairly significant storm system to de develop over the far east of Canada in, into the open Atlantic. And then that created the, the renewed um, ridge to develop over western areas of Europe. So this is how Europe is looking as we uh, open the month of July Anomalous warmth, 6 to you know, 12 Celsius above average across mainland Europe. Cooler now across the north uh, of the UK, as well as uh, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Uh, temperature's a big drop from yesterday, mid-30s yesterday to, if you're lucky, mid-20s through the course of this afternoon. Look at how chilly it is over western areas of Russia as well. So, we've obviously got more Atlantic influence coming back into play once again. The question mark is... Do we see this pattern repeating itself over the next couple of weeks? What we've seen, you know, just gone and also two weeks previous to that or about 10 days ago, we did see obviously two heat waves developing. So I want to kind of uh, kind of build this picture, so to speak. Sea surface temperature anomalies are, 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 are well above average across, say, a surround in the UK. We do actually have 2021 20, Celsius uh, into the Thames estuary here uh, on the... Uh, just at the mouth of the Thames River and also on the southern flank of Suffolk as well. We've also got 19 Celsius uh, around the Wash area and, uh, you know, 15, 16 quite widely around England and Wales. But I want to draw your attention to what is it, it going on across uh, Europe and the Mediterranean in particular. We have actually got 
Uh, we did record a temperature of 31 Celsius surrounding the Balearics over the last few days. That is exceptionally warm temperatures for this time of year, that is for sure. Looking at the water temperatures surrounding Italy, and you can see here that we've got 20, it's very widespread. Now, if you look at the sea surface temperature, normally here you have got a very, very warm Mediterranean compared to average here. Record breaking warm temperatures for late June, early July. Very warm sea surface temperatures surrounding the UK and Ireland as well. And combine this with uh, ongoing uh, very dry conditions within the soils, uh, particularly England, Wales, but also a good chunk of Scotland away from the northwest, Ireland and Northern Ireland as well. And then as we move into the north of France, into the low countries, we have eased things slightly over Germany, uh, over the northern Netherlands as well, thanks to uh, downpours associated with thunderstorms. But generally speaking, we've had this very hot, um, high pressure dominated south of Europe, low pressure the further north you go. Scotland, Northern Ireland has largely missed out on, on any appreciable heat. But the, the combination of dry ground and the anomalous warm SSTs makes me think that we're going to, this region of the world will be attracted to high pressure rather than lower pressure. This water temperature uh, over the central North Atlantic is another uh, interesting aspect. I would expect to start to see a, a trough developing here over the central North Atlantic and a ridge that is a, essentially focused over South Central Europe and it's going to fluctuate back and forward uh, towards the UK. Retreat is going to expand. It's going to retreat, I think, uh, through the course of the next several weeks. I wanted to also draw your attention to something else. There is the potential with uh, an MJO focused over the West Pacific. Let's look at that. You can see here that we've got the upward convection here over the western portion of the Pacific Basin. I am expecting to see a, a system developing over the West Pacific. And what this could do is set the wheels in motion for the next ridge over Western Europe in the next couple of weeks, believe it or not. So basically what, what would happen is you've got a upward motion over the West Pacific. That then triggers a, a couple of typhoons to develop over the West Pacific. They le then lift northwards, energizing the jet over the Pacific. And then that then creates this uh, new wave break scenario to take place over the Pacific, forcing the low pressure to develop uh, around the Aleutians, builds high pressure over northwestern North America. So if you look at this here, you've got a little uh, area of low pressure in the upper levels uh, just to the south of Japan here, to the north of the, the main uh, equatorial belt. That is the model indicating low pressure within this region here. Watch what happens between week one and week two. Obviously, we've got the ridge of high pressure centered over the west, central North Atlantic. We've got a northwesterly airflow in the means over the next seven days, according to the, the CFSV2. But in the week two, you notice here that we're starting to build the pressure out ahead of that the possible system developing here. So as that area of low pressure and that the heat energy lifts north, north eastwards, uh, perhaps to the east of Japan, that then forces the high to build out ahead of it to the east. They increase uh, an area of low pressure to develop here uh, around the, uh, the Aleutian Islands of, of Alaska. That then in turn builds the pressure over Western North America and sends it trough into the eastern side of uh, North America here. Watch what happens. This is the day uh, 16th through the 23rd of July. You notice here that we start to see the pressure building northwards over the UK and Ireland in a downstream uh, you know, evolution. The sequence of events that takes place from the West Pacific across North America into the Atlantic Basin, I think, will eventually lead to, uh, to heights building over the UK and Ireland. It, it is somewhat speculative at the moment here because obviously we're very far out in time. Uh, the, the, you know there is no definitive system uh, developed so far over over uh, the West Pacific, and obviously the atmosphere uh, you know does what it wants to do. But generally speaking, if you look at the CFSV two here for week one, you've got an area of high pressure centered over Eastern Europe and another over southwestern to the southwest of the UK and Ireland here. We've got a, a negative here over the north. We've got a higher pressure to the, you know, over the bulk of England, Wales and Ireland here. In the week two off the CFSV2, we've got high, kind of generally centred over the southern UK here with a jet stream uh, 
clipping the northern half of, of Scotland. But it's the period here between the, the 8th through 14 and the uh, 15 through 21 that we start to see the heights building northwards once again. And this is a kind of, you know, a, a hemisphere-wide teleconnection. So it's a test to see what happens. And I think, obviously, the, the July outlook indicates that higher pressure, hotter temperatures are likely mid to late months with a bit of back and forth through the first couple of weeks of July. We'll wait and see what happens, but I'm certainly interested to see how this pattern evolves. Looking at the CFSV2 week one, then, you can see here wet areas versus dry areas, northern France, southern low countries, Germany, Poland, drier than average, wet than average to the north of that into Scandinavia, northwestern UK, eastern and southeastern UK, wet than average. In the week two, with high pressure generally in control, drier than average. In the week three, in the week four, drier than average. In terms of the temperature anomalies then, you can see here, week one looks uh, you know somewhat cooler than average across the bulk of the UK and Ireland, which is interesting. Hotter than average across the south where the high is uh, focused. In the week two, we start to see warmer temperatures lift the north. In the week three, in the week four, you can start to see the heights rising, drier than average, warmer than average signal showing up and uh, could be wrong, but the CFSV2 indicating that the you know along with the GFS the ECMWF that we see upper level, uh, uh, you know, uh, divergence over the West Pacific that then creates that ripple effect across the Pacific, North America, Atlantic, and into Europe eventually. So we will watch this space going forward in terms of um, thunderstorms. We've obviously got that frontal system that has dragged the temperatures down significantly. Let's have a quick look at the temperatures in. And see what they're showing uh, in terms of Europe as a whole. So still a boiler of a day across Germany, knocking the door of 40 across northeastern Germany. Temperatures were into the 30s, they're now starting to drop into the upper 20s across Belgium, Netherlands, and into the north of France. Obviously, temperatures here were close to 40. Uh, you know, over um, I think it was over 90% of France yesterday was 35 plus Celsius. It was a, a remarkably hot day across the bulk of France during the course of yesterday. Looking at yesterday then, you can see here, these were the temperatures. We had, a, obviously, like I said, 34.7 in London. We had the uh, temperatures uh, widely across the heart of France, uh, above 40. Cooler across the north and west of the UK and Ireland here, the focus uh, over the southeast of the, uh, over the, uh, of the UK here. But you can see how the temperatures are uh, yeah, the heat is getting kicked eastwards into central areas of Europe here, turning much fresher across the UK and Ireland. Look at the contrast between yesterday and today over the UK then. We've only got uh, mid-20s today. These were the highs yesterday. Uh, obviously, much uh, much and such across the bulk of the UK and Ireland here. It's generally that middle and south and southeast of the UK that was very warm yesterday much much fresher through the course of today so we will wait and see what happens but uh, that frontal system edge and east is triggering some big thunderstorms over southern france and uh, out ahead of it where we've got that lift within the atmosphere still plenty of heat and humidity at the surface and as that frontal system approaches with something fresher in the upper levels of the atmosphere that is enhancing the lift to the east of that boundary you can see here some of these uh, thunderstorms these Potential supercells even developing over uh, the northeast of Iberia, northern Iberia, into the uh, into the south east of, of France, up into the northeast of France, into the Low Countries as well. So if we go back to the bigger view here, plenty of heat uh, uh, to the east of that frontal system, thunderstorms galore uh, along the boundary, and then something a lot fresher coming in on the back side. Looking at the eight fifties, then real quick, and we will end with this here. This just shows you the contrast that we've got uh, between West and Central Europe here at the moment. So temperatures uh, plus 20 Celsius over northeastern France into the, the eastern low countries in Germany. But look at the, the fresh air now moving into the UK and Ireland here. We'll look at that kind of typhoon, uh, you know, ridge trough link uh, over the next few days with regards to the, the evolution of the next potential hot spell for for Western areas of Europe, I'm fairly confident that we will start to see a return to the heat in a more appreciable way towards the middle portions of this month and beyond here. But Dave, a lot of back and forth 
Until then, we're going to be talking about upper 20s again over the next few days across the southeast. Chilly night tonight, clear skies, light winds ahead of a new frontal system. We've got plenty of rain. I know I was going to end the video, but let's have a quick look at the overview of the GFS then real quick. Plenty of thunderstorms, eastern portions of England and Scotland through the course of today. I also forgot to make mention of that. But uh, you can see here the next boundary moving into the northwest of Scotland. Fairly heavy, persistent rain. Uh, rain totals in excess of 100 millimetres across uh, part of the West Highlands over the next couple of days. Then we've got a squeeze in isobars. Pressure at 1034 millibars here. Now down to generally between halfway between the, the Azores and Ireland. We've got a 1034 high pressure centre. We've got an area of low pressure over right Western Iberia, triggering more showers and thunderstorms and a bit of a a reduction in the heat here but you can see weather systems moving around the top of the high area of low pressure at 997 millibars versus a 1034 high that tightens the pressure field and, and strengthens those westerly winds and obviously with those moist west winds we are going to see fairly sizable rainfall totals western ireland northwest england and western areas of scotland so plenty of things going on at the moment i hope you're enjoying what you're seeing like share and subscribe and i'll see you tomorrow with more bye for now